If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Kyle is a, he's a great dude. Very self-aware, confident, intelligent dude. Interesting history. We always have a good time talking to the guy. You know, we first met Kyle. How long ago was it that we met Kyle? Two years ago. It was about two years ago. He came into he our studio. He was introduced to us through our boy, Justin Brink. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. And we had a great time with him. And uh, we, you know, immediately hit it off with him, invited him to come with us to Paleo FX. And, you know, it's funny because Kyle kind of represents that mentality where, you know, you just don't don't worry about, you know, the things you can't control in life and try to control the things you can. And so he seems really calm and relaxed when things seem to be difficult for him, but it always seems to work out. And in, now he's this, you know, he's, what is he? The, the, the director. director of human optimization at on it through these series of events that uh, introduced him to, you know, Aubrey Marcus, who is the CEO of the company. And he, you know, he's doing a great job over there. We really enjoy yeah. meeting with this guy that he showed us tremendous hospitality here in, at Austin. And we had a great conversation in this podcast where we interviewed him now you can find Kyle um, on the On It podcast. He actually hosts the On It podcast. We also talked a lot about the. Um, he brought it up first, and then uh, our sponsor, Brain FM. So, and we we haven't talked about Brain FM on our show in a long time, and uh, I don't know if a lot of people know where to go find that. Oh yeah, that's a that's a product that we all con- I actually used it last night. I put on some. Yeah, I use it on the flight over here. I use it all the time, yeah. man. Um, so we're not really necessarily sponsored by Brain FM, but we are. We do have our affiliated with them. And if you want to get uh, or try out some of their products, you go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. In fact, I believe you get a discount if you use that code. Yeah. Um, so again, Kyle Kingsbury, you can find him on Instagram and Twitter at King Kingsboo, K I N G S B U. You can find uh, the On It Twitter and Instagram page is at On It. And of course, On It.com. So without any further ado, here we are interviewing our good friend. Kyle Kingsbury. <laughs> hey, you know uh, it's a special day today. Do you guys know this? No. It's a special day today, Justin. Oh, <laughs> no, dude. No, it's not. This guy was not uh, even going to no, say no, that. Man. You weren't even going to tell everybody yeah, it's, your, blast. it's your birthday? No, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, yeah. my God, yeah, we bro. We wow. missed the birthday tickles that we were supposed to do in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we wake you up in the morning all cuddly with your pillow. I was expecting, like, you know, Everyone's special naked. pancakes. Yeah. God damn Come it. On, man. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah, How old thanks, are you turning brother. today? Uh, 38, man. 38? Yeah, I'm old ass. Fucking guy. old, dude. You didn't even get him a good coffee. You guys bought him a fucking Starbucks because it was free. <laughs> That's what he birthday. wanted. <laughs> you got him a fucking free cold Way brew. Way to make us feel like a dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Birthday tickles tonight, dude, yeah. for sure. You need the birthday tickles and jiggles. That's all it matters. Birthday jiggles and tickles. <laughs> we're going to give you those real quick. I'll have you sing to me later. So what's up, Kyle? What's up? How what's you up, doing, Sam? brother? I'm doing fucking phenomenal. I want to hear about your adventure here at On It. I mean, you, it's been a short period since you've been here, and you're just fucking crushing it, man. It's been a five month uh, rocket ship ride. It's been absolutely phenomenal. You know, when I before I took the job, I didn't know what to expect. I was like, man, all right, oh, cool. I get to host the On It podcast. That's something I'm cool with. It's in my wheelhouse. They're like, well, we want you to work on product development. I'm like, all right, cool. I know supplements. And they're like, hey, we're working on food. We want you to help develop keto recipes and shit like that. So it's like, fuck yeah, man, I'm in. And then, you know, we want you to continue to learn shit. And I'm into biohacks and all the weird stuff like Greenfield. So really been diving deeper and going down that rabbit hole. And then as I was joking with or complaining with you guys earlier, there's a lot of fucking trolls out there in the world that that they well, won't. Dude, it doesn't want, matter how much science supports it. They're gonna be like, look at this fucking clown. He's gonna zap his brain. Now, or- now before we get into that, because I do want to get in, I think that's absolutely hilarious. Uh, you, you're very self aware guy, super super confident, and you're one of these people that lives. And correct me if I'm wrong. You live kind of by this life uh, philosophy where you do your best and then you you're, you just the universe kind of provides and things happen for you and it just works out that way and you're very comfortable with that and you exemplify that we hung out with you I think it was at Paleo FX and you were you were with uh, Brain FM at the time mm-hmm. some stuff happened and then I mean it's like it all kind of worked out for you it's almost like your philosophy fucking works and you're an example of that like you you well, met Aubrey and then boom now you're working it on. Yeah. Then it's all worked you out. You uprooted and moved out of state, and then it wasn't even a month later before you were moving, uh, moving again, right? Well, we yeah, we moved to Vegas uh, when I was going to be podcasting and with Brain FM as the sponsor, right? And we were there for four months, you know. And, okay, and it's it funny because I had met Aubrey, you know, 
you guys let me be dude on the couch. You provided a space for me. So thank you very much, gentlemen, in a, in a very, very indirect way, but very direct at the same time. We like you're, you, bro. It wasn't a favor. Job yeah. here. It wasn't a favor. We like your company. So yeah, yeah man, I had, we had you a fucking pool blast. boy there for a minute. I was, was the pool fun. boy. <laughs> yeah. I was the pool boy. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you interrupted our podcast. Your little like boy shorts. I, I vividly remember. <laughs> I told that was Aub- the fucking greatest interruption <laughs> you've ever had. I, I told Aubrey that yesterday. I like, yeah. And he goes, he goes, whoa, what does that say about you if you were uncomfortable? I said, no, we can't podcast. Oh, no, no yeah. we didn't skip a beat. We were just fine with it. <laughs> you guys just kept rolling. Yeah. I recognized it. And I was yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> I'm in. It's good, a good, look. good deal. But yeah, you know, um, it's. It's one of those things where it's never like, oh, I have complete faith and trust that everything will work out all the fucking time. Nobody does. There's always question marks, you know? And I kept getting this feeling from Brain FM that they didn't quite realize how long it takes to grow a podcast, you know? And, I, and we don't need to go into them too much because I, I have nothing but gratitude for them. And, and in the end, they provided finances for me to learn how to podcast. Yeah. And I was able to return the favor by, you know, getting them on different shows, got them on Greenfields, got them on yours, yeah. help the world understand that they have a phenomenal product that works. I still fucking use their product. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're good. It's excellent. So do yeah. I. Mm-hmm. But you know, I got canned in the airport on a flight to Austin to fucking interview with Aubrey. Bro, this is a wow. crazy, that's what I'm saying. It's such a yeah. crazy and, story. And I, right Solid then, destiny. I didn't, I had, I had nothing saved. I had put all my money into the podcast. We just got a Prius so I could drive to places like Ben Greenfields in Spokane, a thousand miles each direction. Mm. I'm listening to Audible and fucking podcasts the whole way. Uh, driving out to LA, shit like that. You know, I, had, I bought a new computer for work and I didn't have money saved to, to have a fucking U-Haul to get me back to my mom's garage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. So at that point, I realized like, hey, you know, who knows if this on it thing will pan out? Um, I don't know how it's going to work out. So without trying to figure out every fucking variable, which inevitably leads you only to worry and panic, mm-hmm. it's like the only option I have is to meditate. So I fucking meditated hard, hardcore meditation <laughs> for four hours on that flight with Brain FM, ironically. Mm. And when I got off the plane, I felt fucking better than I had before I got the news. Wow. Hmm. And I was floating, man. I felt fucking great. Hit it off with Ob and, um, you know, picked his brain on on what the job would entail. It was more, far more than I ever could so have So he just for. straight offered a job the very first time you guys met? He had offered me the the potential to work for on it prior to me coming out there. And then oh. as I wanted to start, you know. It, Is that when you guys met at Paleo? Was that when that started? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we hit it off at Paleo, but, you know, there's a lot of other people around that kind of stuff. We ended up sharing... <laughs> Uh, there's nothing random, no random events. We shared a flight back to Vegas from Austin. Where it was me, him, and John Wolf, and the three of us sat next to each other and really hit it off. We talked about, you know, diet, nutrition, health and wellness, ketogenic diet, the the, the pros and cons, <clears throat> all the different types of strength training, mixed martial arts, plant medicines like ayahuasca and psilocybin, and just went down the rabbit hole on fucking everything. Mm. And it was it was funny because. He had mentioned, you know, hey, I've been looking for a guy like you to have it on it. And it, it almost seemed like, yeah, sure. You know, but as he explained it, you know, with, with really working on his book on the day that's coming out April 17th, like he would spend 16 hours in the fucking hole at his house, not even answering his phone, not looking at it. Mm-hmm. And at that time, there's nobody yet on it who kind of understands all the pieces. And it doesn't mean I'm an expert in everything, but I do understand a lot of what's going on there from the training standpoint to the food that we're, we're integrating into it and, and the supplementation and the social media aspect and the marketing aspect. So really there was a prime fit for me, you know? And, um, we hit it off. Obviously, I fucking love the guy. I've been a fan of his for years. And uh, he was like, you know, explaining the job. And I'm like, this sounds better than I ever could have hoped for. And it is. It truly is. But he asked, you know, when could you start? And I just started cracking up. And I was like, man, <laughs> you never guess what just happened. And he was like, fuck, dude, you're right. I never would have fucking guessed it. I couldn't I couldn't tell if my life depended on it that something that serious had just happened to you. Because Ooh. I wasn't showing it. And it wasn't that I was hiding it. I truly was embodying. You truly let go of this it. Go, the go with the flow, man. Yeah. Something good will happen and I can just relax and trust in it and know like whatever's. It will reveal it's, itself. It's, yeah, yeah. It's really just this concept of if it's in my control, then I'll work on it. If it's out of my control, then I have to let go and surrender right. to it and just be 
fucking me. And that's if I the can adi- do that, that's right. the attitude that I'm talking about that yeah. you exemplify so well. I still remember that night, dude. We do you remember we were on. You went. You're, you guys went separate ways, right? That's what you walked over. You said goodbye to us. You said I'm gonna go see if I can sit next to Aubrey and go talk to Aubrey. And yep. you hit. You knuckles me, then you headed over there, and then you guys were taking off. I think that's where you, you guys were taking off to L.A. or were to you Vegas. Guys? Vegas. Yeah, you were going Vegas. to Vegas, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. were all we were all leaving. We were leaving from Palo FX. Yeah, you saw me in my giant pink uh, unicorn sweater. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like who's this fucking Those giant pimp. guy in yeah. that pink unicorn <laughs> yeah, sweater? No, but I mean that it's that philo- And you you tell the story. There's a story that Eckhart Tolle tells in A New Earth. The is that so story? And I've heard you repeat that. It's one of my of all-time favorites. If you wouldn't man. mind sharing a little bit of that with our audience, you because talk, I feel like that's your philosophy. And if you really, I swear to God, you exemplify yep. it. It cracks me up because you're so it. calm about it. Well, you know, you know I, don't, I don't know this verbatim. I've listened to this book 12 times now on Audible, and uh, I suggest to people to read it, actually, rather than listen to it. He has a very uh, monotone, yeah. soft, yeah. like he'll lull you to sleep if uh, you're not used uh, to it, you know? But, um, you know, he says that, that he talks about the great Zen master, the is that so guy, you know, and this, the townspeople come running up to him and they're like, Hey, so-and-so, so-and-so your, your son, he, uh, he fell off a horse and he broke his leg. It's, it's, it's terrible. He can't walk now. They broke his leg. It's terrible. And he's like, is that so? And so he sees the kid and then the kid's in the hospital. He's got a thing on his leg. And then the next day the army shows up the military and they're like, Hey, we're drafting your son. He's going to war where he inevitably will die. But now he can't go because his leg's broken. So everybody's like, oh, this is amazing. He couldn't go. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Is that so? And it just goes on and on. And this is always his take. Is that so? Because we don't know what's going to happen in the now. We only know what happens in hindsight, Mm -hmm. how that worked out, right? And so many, so often in our lives, when we're in the shit of something and we're like, ah, this fucking sucks. I hate it. You look back on that and stress is the stimulus for growth. The challenges we have are what help us move on to become better people. And without those things, we're not going to fucking level up. If we lived in a fucking utopia, like like Aubrey says, how shitty would this game be if there were no challenges, if there were no stressors, if we just fucking partied and fucked all day and ate and there was unlimited psychedelics and there wasn't a down regulation so you could be high all day every day. Yeah. You know, that there's no growth there, right? And the, the beauty of life is... There's no limit to the amount of stressors we get. They're always going to come at us from every fucking angle. Mm-hmm. There's always something new. And and it doesn't matter where you're at. You know, you could have $10 million in the bank. The stock, the stock market's going to crash. You're going to lose money in your investments. Like there's always going to be panic somewhere. It's how you react and how you deal with that in the moment that allows you to have peace mm-hmm. on the day to day because it's always shifting. Now you're, you're the, you know, you have a family, wife and, and son, beautiful family. Um, and you're the, you're the breadwinner, right? You're the sole provider and you're going through these transitions. You're going from, you know, pro MMA fighter to, you know, this next job, but, but you believe in yourself, but then you lose that one, you go do something else and that changes and you've had to move a couple times now to where you're in this position now where, I think you're in a position that you deserve to be in uh, mm-hmm. that kind of realizes your talent. But during this period of time, and I know what it's like to be, I was married for 15 years. I know how challenging it can be when you have a partner that doesn't firmly uh, and almost blindly just believe in you. It's very difficult when you go through those challenges. How, what is that like for you and your wife? How is she in terms of supporting you in that particular way? Is that challenging or is she kind of like, I trust, I believe in you? Well, there's no doubt it's been stressful. I mean, just moving alone is one of the great stressors. And to move twice in one year right. with a two and a half year old, also one of fucking life's great stressors. Right? Yeah. And, then, and according to everyone, maybe you guys can clue me in, Justin itself. Everyone I've talked to, unfortunately, says that three is worse than two. It is. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> so three's the worst. So we got confirmation, that, brother. We got that going yeah. for us. Coming up real quick, you know, Bear turns three in in May. Um, it's it's been it's been a hell of a ride looking back on 2017. But the truth is, at every step of the way, Tosh has had trust and faith that it'll work out. And even when it was hard, and and maybe harder for her at times, you know, because she is full time mom, she has to deal with, you know, in Vegas we had that's where she's from. We had her family there in California. That's where I'm from. We had my family there. Here in Austin, we don't have family. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot yeah, to tough. that, you know, and, and we, we tried like urban sitter and we fucking hire like a chick with five stars across the board. And, and she was horrible. She yeah. fucking bounced out hella quick. She's like, okay, bye. And left. And then bear 
wouldn't talk to us. He was violent for four fucking hours. Oh, oh my God. So violent. Tough. And I've never seen him like that. And dude, I was like, trust people that aren't fucker. family. Ugh, yeah, dude, it's that's, tough. That's man. a mother. Yeah. It's really tough. So, but looking at all that shit, is it worth it? Yeah. yeah. Has it panned out? Fuck yeah. And, and are we in a great spot right now? Like there's no question, you know? And, and with all that, Things take time with anything, and we've met some other great mm. families out here. We're, we're, uh, we've become really close with Alex Rubchinsky and his, and his wife, Sarah. They have a, a little daughter named Ari who's really close to Bear, who absolutely loves him. And, uh, you know, Cal and Peyton I met doing these vitamin IV pushes with Lance Armstrong and Tim Ferriss. Name drop. Name drop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Those are some it's just, just dope shit, though. You know, like, like that's the kind of stuff that I get to do it on it. We, we yeah. have some of the greatest athletes and, and thought leaders of all time coming through the doors. And Aubrey is like, Kyle, you're going to sit with these guys and do this. Cause I'm busy, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's dope that he has the confidence in me to be the front man for on it, but then also to, to help build those relationships with these people. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you know, we, we met John Callahan, who's, who's a phenomenal guy, has an amazing family and three kids and lives here in Austin and bear absolutely loves them. So are we getting to network and meet other families and people? Cause you guys know with kids, I got plenty of friends that don't have kids mm. and, and they're amazing friends. It doesn't disqualify you like, oh, you don't have kids yet. I'm not going to hang with Adam. Yeah. It's like, that's not, that's not the case at all. Right. But when it comes to inviting people to do stuff or this and that, it's different of when you have kids and the parents, the other parents fucking know that. Yep. So it's refreshing when you do have some family friends that can, that can act like that and say like, hey man, you know, without, without you asking why don't you drop bear off and go, go on a date, you know, shit like that. Like that's special to have that in a place where we don't have any blood relatives and family. And so like everything, I feel we, like you attract that though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel like everything we've needed has, has, has been provided. It takes a little longer for some shit to come to fruition, all but, develop, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's really what it boils down to is like, just to know like, Hey, if these are things that we need in life, we'll find a way to attract those into our life. And it's not, you know, Ooh, the secret, this guy's going to fucking sit and meditate on it. It's going <laughs> to show up ping. Yeah. Like, but in some way, in well, some way it is that in some way it is well, something you're just I more focus receptive. On. Yeah. It's I'll focus on this thing and, and we will fucking navigate to find it, you know, and well, that's, that's been the case through and through time and time and again. And I firmly believe in it. There's Ooh. a lot of, there's a lot of work that you're doing behind the, all that too, though. I believe too, with all your personal growth and read, you you read a lot. You're yeah. very, you're a smart guy. You're great with relationships and people mm-hmm. like that takes effort and people don't realize that sometimes. And I think it's a, it's a lost art. I think it's so important when, with building your network is uh, sometimes I think it'd be even more important than what people think about. And when you get a guy like you with the, all this stuff looks like it's just unfolding, it's like, no, there's a lot of shit that you're doing behind no, the scenes. I love your attitude towards it too. Like that whole time period, it was like, it was like a, a training grounds, you know, like being able to interview and like hone in on your craft and do all that stuff, you know, with uh, brain FM and then, you know, having that all kind of like go away. But Guess what? Now you know you have those skills. You have that skill set all nice and polished going into this mm. new job. Yeah, and it's it's a funny thing, you know, because with when I first met Aubrey, you know, he's talking about that. I was like, this is it's going to be hard to pull me from Vegas. We got family here. Mm. Uh, Brain FM paid me well, and I made my own fucking schedule. That's the most important thing. I chose when I wanted to work. Mm. I could do five podcasts in a week and not do shit for a month. Just be dad, just travel, just have fun. Right. So now working a nine to five, and this is no typical nine to five. Um, I get to fucking hit the sauna. I get to meditate on site. I get to go outside and use the organic tobacco Paul Check hooked us up with. I get to fucking walk 20 yards from my desk to the jujitsu mats and roll each day. I get to do all this shit, play with all the tools, the mace, the kettlebell, the fucking barbell. It's all there. And I could do that. Not only am I, am I allowed to do it, I'm encouraged to do it. Every employee on it, is encouraged to work out, encouraged to take time for themselves. They do co-pay on fucking massages on site where they pay half the goddamn massage. Wow. Uh-huh. And I can get a massage That's on the awesome. clock, half off. <laughs> you know, like it's not a regular job by any means, but yeah. to bear, he doesn't understand. My son has no fucking clue. I say, daddy has to go to work and I go to give him a kiss and dude kicks me in the face to shove me out the door. Like, <laughs> fuck you, dad. <laughs> Don't you leave me. You know, so there, there has been a learning curve there, but- you know, going back to what you were saying, Adam, like possibly the greatest thing, the thing I'm most, or one of the things I'm most appreciative of about my job now is I get paid to read. I get paid to fucking learn. And on it pays $5,200 a year for every employee to continue education. 
So I'll be doing Czech Holistic Life Coach Level 2 and 3 and 4 when they develop it. I'll be working on different Every things. employee gets that? Every fucking employee gets wow. that, man. That's great. They have a they have one of the best benefits packages ever. And it's not like I have anything to, this is my first real job. So right. it's not like I have anything to compare it to. <laughs> Lord knows the UFC wasn't hooking up fucking benefits packages. Like, oh, We're yeah. the first ever combat sport to involve insurance. And it happens to be injury insurance. I, I get a staff infection. I'm paying out of pocket for oh, antibiotics. Man. Fucking cocksuckers. But <laughs> going back to seeing, focusing on the light, not on the dark. Um, you know, I, they buy all my books. I'm fucking reading books nonstop. I'm trying to get to Ben Greenfield level where I can read seven books a week, but Damn. that's just damn near impossible. Jedi. I don't understand how that guy reads seven books a week with two twin boys. He started and when he was like two. He's so. a fucking savage. Yeah. He yeah. really is. He's yeah. on another level, bro. He really is on another level. But another I feel level. like you have to trade something for that. You know what I mean? There's a certain amount of normalness well, he, that you he trade speed, for it. He speed reads, and yeah, he's he's a different. He's carved out of a different cut of cloth mm-hmm. than I am, but... um. You know, it is really fantastic that when we have a guest on, I think that's one of the differentiators between, you know, like Rogan has five, you know, you guys do five, five shows a week, that yeah. kind of shit, but you're also really plugged in. It's your full-time thing. Rogan stretched in other places with comedy, with sure. travel, with all that kind of shit. So he doesn't get to do a ton of prep on his guys. You might hear him on a podcast, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We go all these traveling, but I get to read a guy's whole fucking book before I interview him. That's cool. Like that makes the questions a little bit better. Of yeah. course. You know, I know the material. I know what they're about. If they haven't, if they're not an author, I could listen to them on other shows or I can dig deep, you know, deeper. Like we get fighters and shit sometimes that I've, you know, I'm a fight fan, but I don't know every fucking fighter. Right. So we've got Andrew Craig at on it who, who runs like all of our sponsorship through athletes. Who's also a high level fighter, brand belt in jujitsu fought in the UFC. And, uh, and that guy will give me the lowdown. So I have good questions that stimulate great conversation. And you look at a guy like Kevin Ross, you know, Kevin, I knew I was a fan of as a fighter. I had no idea the depth of that guy. He's one of our best podcasts and mm. it was all on fucking Ooh. tackling fear. And that's the shit I want. I don't want to interview the fighter. That's going to tell me about his next fight and how important it is. He wins the belt and all that. It's like, yeah, man, same, same. Everybody that's in that, in that fucking game wants that. Right. right. Tell me some shit that you went through. Tell me what fucking got you here. Tell me the mental practices you have when mm-hmm. you're in the cage. That's the shit that fascinates me now. Mm. And it's been cool because one way or another, we keep attracting that to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the show has really changed, you know, and, and when I first got there, I wanted to, you know, what's the way you build a show? You're a guest on other shows. Right. right? But at that time, I didn't want people to backlog Orlando, you know, all, all you know, all love for Orlando for yeah. getting to where it is. But I didn't want them to go through the old podcast. I want them to go through my podcast. Mm-hmm. And now we've got, you know, they 20, can hear you. Yeah, you we got voice. fucking 20 yeah. of them. It's a new voice. It's top tier guests like Ben Greenfield, Rob Wolf, all my fucking favorites. Mind you know. pump soon. Mind pumps yeah, coming on this shit today, boys. Yeah. So what did you, so when did you, um, <laughs> we'll be your top. There had to be been a point topic. where you probably read a five star <laughs> review or somebody DM you or emailed you or got feedback. When was that turning point when you knew like you were on the right track and really making a difference and like you felt it from pe- the listeners and people that are paying attention? Well, people write us more. I don't, you know, we get five star reviews and shit like that. And I always, obviously, we encourage that. So I'm not saying please don't write us a review. Please write us a review. It helps a lot. But um, it's when people just write like on Instagram or Facebook at On It, you know, and they're like, man, the new guy hosting the On It podcast is fucking inspiring. I oh, love this yeah. Guy. Do you remember when that, for, that first, off, right? when that shit started trickling in, it was like, fuck yeah, man, we're on the right track. We're doing good things. And I'm happy that it's, it's seen and felt from the other side the way I hope it is, you know, because mm-hmm. I really listen to these podcasts. It's something you guys taught me. Listen to your podcast. See if you're, you know, if you're doing anything wrong, what can be improved upon? And one of the best compliments that I've received was allowing guests to talk. That was fucking huge yeah. because so many, so many times, like we all fucking bro out when we're together and I don't give a fuck if we're talking over each other. We're fucking, yeah. we're yeah. all friends. But if I have, you know, Rob Wolf on and I'm asking him a question about the importance of the carb test and what some genetic differences may be, you know, things like that. And then he starts talking and I ask him a three part. How many times do you get interviewed? Somebody asks you a loaded question, <laughs> A, B, and C, and you're halfway through B and they're like, well, hold on here. It. Let me tell you right now, you know, and you're like, I can fucking forgot about C and even let me finish B, uh, you know? So I think people really appreciate that. The allowing the expert to have their space to talk and. And, you know, just like 
you guys know, there's a certain flow to conversation. No, there's an art to that. There's yeah. a, there's yeah. an art to yeah. the ability to be able to just to have this conversation, ask really good questions, but then also not sound canned either. Like you sat here and wrote all these questions out. And We're not Barbara Walters. Yeah. And you're not jumping from all of a sudden you're asking me about my childhood. And then also you take me to like bodybuilding and I'm like, whoa, wait a second, dude, <laughs> you just get me all emotional and deep and you just switch, shifted gears. That's not so, how people talk in real life. It's yeah. not. And yeah. I think, I think the audience feels that when you, when you hear people that, that interview that way. And I think the natural flow of conversation is just, it's more entertaining to listen to. It feels more real. Um, I mean, I, every time when we get a, get in an interview, I feel like I'm always, I'm asking the questions that I want to know. I want to get to know you. You know, I want to get to know you. I'm sitting across from somebody and like, this is uh, the type of things I would ask this person. If I'm thinking about him being a friend and hanging out with him, like I want to know his values, what he's like, you know, the type of personality is, is this someone who would want to be, I want to be the, friends with. Oh yeah, I'm thinking about all that shit. The, the hardest interviews are when you're, you're interviewing a guest, you're trying to have a good conversation. We had a tough one with Dave Asprey and yesterday, yesterday uh, interviewing <laughs> Aubrey was a difficult one. When you interview people, sometimes you can feel or it feels like they're putting on like, this is who I am and I need to say these particular things. Dave Asprey was like that the entire time. Like he would not go deeper than one inch below the surface. And it was very like, here's the answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. Yesterday was difficult. Aubrey started like that for about 40 minutes where he was talking about his book. And it's very much like, and then we were like, well, let's have, let's have a, like a deeper conversation. Let's have fun with this. And we broke after about 40 minutes or so. You were there. You listened to the whole thing. After about 40 minutes, we got into that. And that's a very difficult thing to do sometimes with a guest who's coming over there and they're like, they know what they want to say. They know what they're supposposed to say. And they're good at it. And they're good at it. And so yeah. you ask them questions like, cadence. yeah, like tell me yeah. your, tell me the last, the, you know, the, the biggest challenge you've had in the last year. And then they'll answer with something like, well, everything's challenging and life is challenging. Like what the, what does that fucking mean? Like, tell me what happened. I want to hear a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We want very, details. Very yeah. Have you had situations like that where you're trying to pull from people and it's just like you hit a wall? Yeah, and thankfully it's just been um yeah, I don't want to name names, you know, but uh there's been there's been a couple of instances like that where, you know, it just seemed like I was lobbing people underhand softballs <laughs> and they were hitting into the infield. Yeah. You know, and then that that I was conscientious enough to know like, okay, I can I can speak a bit more on this podcast. There are things where maybe if I wanted to them them to elaborate on a subject and they didn't, then I could jump in. And it's mm-hmm. safe to do that because I'm not I'm not overstepping. I'm not speaking over them, but I can piggyback on their thoughts. And in the end, there's, there's, you know, a nodding and a, and a, yeah, man, that's exactly what I was saying. Right. So in any conversation when you're sitting down with somebody, you know, oftentimes you'll repeat what they said back to them in a way that helps, you know, them know that you're listening and that you understand what they're saying. Right. And if you do that in a, in a different way for podcast, because it's not like you guys are going to be like, right, Kyle. So you're saying you moved twice in the last year. That's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't fucking work that way on a podcast. Yeah. Right. But you can elaborate on the challenging, yeah. you know, the challenging aspects of that and different things that you guys have gone through. And then it makes sense for the listener. Yeah. Well, here's something you know? about you that I'm going to, that I'm going to let you know that I've observed is that you have an ability and very few people have this ability. I think uh, we have that ability to a little, a little bit of an extent. Adam in particular has this ability where you can get away with saying whatever the fuck you want. Very mm-hmm. few people can do this. Yeah. Like it would be it's it would be difficult for you and that's just cuz your energy and how you present yourself. You can pretty much say whatever you want and I don't think anybody would really get upset or angry. I think they'd laugh about it. And so use that to your advantage. That you can ask whatever you want to me. Mm-hmm. I know this about you. There's an energy. Not it's everybody can do this. Yeah, Some people would do this to me and I'd be I'd, I'd put a wall right up. But you have that ability where you could say something and I'd be like, "Well, fuck, yeah." Well, Tell I'll. me about your first gay experience. <laughs> exactly. <so>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you have to answer. Right. Yeah, yeah. You have to answer. There's no beating around. There's no beating around. I like the bush. how you, I like how you assume right. yeah. Yeah. your first. Yeah. 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 Well, my, God, there well, are so many. I forgot the first. That's the intelligent wording, right? That doesn't give you an out. Well, I don't want to talk about talk about what you said. I think for the listeners that may not understand this, but you said how you were giving softball pitches like um i know what you meant but explain to the audience what you mean by that like what are you doing when you give a softball pitch question to somebody well let's say i have a guy who's going to talk about a specific type of diet and and you know the easy question or the easy question especially when i'm when i've read something and this didn't this didn't happen with rob wolf but let's use rob as an example rob was fucking one of the best interviews i've ever had but he's one of our favorites too yep 
absolute amazing. Like he's a guy I'd have on. Bro, any doctor that says fuck in the same sentence yeah. as like some uh, duplicitous some med- cock face. Yeah, he's a duplicitous oh, cock my face. Favorite <laughs> in the same ever. sentence is like some medical term, bro. Like, he's yeah. not that, a doctor, but he bro, is fucking he's the smartest one for sure. Fucking cool is what he is. I would have him on four times a year. That's how dope he is, right? And he's so he's a guy. Is Rob not a PhD? He's no, I don't I don't believe he is. He's on the cutting edge of shit though. Right. Dude, I thought he was a PhD. Mm, we'll have to look it up. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't know. Maybe Doug can look that up while we're on here. Mm. Yeah, Doug, pull that shit up like Hung Jamie on the Rogan Show. If he's not, <laughs> he's if he's not, no matter, he's a brilliant fucking man. No, he's man. he's, he's a brilliant man. He's Dougie. a brilliant man, no matter what. Yeah, you know. But the point is, like, if I if I was to say, Rob, um, tell me a bit about this carb test. Why might it be important? And yeah. he goes into the the differences genetically between people. How there's science that showed hummus, which is high in fat and fiber and protein typically would be something that we know from a macronutrient standpoint slows down carbohydrate absorption and wouldn't spike insulin, but it did. It right, didn't right, right. greater than 50% of the people who ate hummus. Right. It, they, it spiked blood sugar like fucking white rice does, mm-hmm. hummus did, right? So in that thing, if I give him that nice little easy pitch and he doesn't take it into detail and he, and, he, and I know there's that story behind mm-hmm. it and I know that there's, there's things from the books or from other podcasts that he's done that's a disappointment, you know, because I want more mm-hmm. and the fucking people listening deserve more. Right. So and, and sometimes it's not it's not necessarily the person doesn't have it in them to say it or they don't want to say it. It's just that they forget or they're on the spot or mm-hmm. maybe they're not used to podcasting. Right. So I've had that issue more with fighters than I have with any expert mm-hmm. in a particular mm-hmm. field. But um, fighters are in particular can be difficult to interview because they're athletes in general. It's we, just it may not have the experience. That's what it is. You know, that's what it that's is. That's all. That's what now in in uh, I'll, there was an interview that you gave and I think it was on Aubrey's show um, where I was listening to it and there was video of it and I really appreciated this because this is not easy for people to do especially a guy especially a an ex MMA guy you cried you cried on a podcast with Aubrey you got very um, open yeah you were very vulnerable very open would you mind going into that a little bit. Yeah, that was right after we came back from Burning Man. This is my first my first burn. And um I was only there for three days with with my wife. And there was there was a few things. It's very it's a powerful place. You know, it's funny because it's like this giant adult playground. And um, you know, you deal with the elements. And there's there's one of these lessons you get in a deep psychedelic uh space is you see the polarity of things and how one doesn't exist without the other another th- you don't have to do psychedelics to understand this it's in a new earth with Eckhart Tolle mm-hmm. but there is no there's no fat without thin there's no tall without short all these things exist on the same fucking line right and you begin to uh, you begin to see them both as one and appreciate all of it together mm-hmm. you know and in in it burning man it's extremely hot during the day extremely cold at night you got fucking alkaline dust in your it can burn your thing your fingers and your feet that's how alkaline it is oh wow you know so you know on the scale of ph yeah super alkaline or super acidic it doesn't matter it'll fuck you up right and so you're dealing with all this stuff and it's just it's madness it's like mad max meets uh edm meets all the drugs and uh (laughs) and there's balance in that too like if i go so hard at night i'm really gonna hurt when it's a fucking 100 degrees tomorrow and I'm dehydrated and I don't want that. So you have to be mindful of what's tomorrow look like. Mm-hmm. And you're there every day, whether you're there for nine days or three days like we were, you have to be mindful of that. But um, the thing that really ripped me open was one of the reasons I wanted to go to Burning Man. I had heard Duncan Trussell talk about this after he went for his first time. They have this place called the Temple. And in the Temple, it's it's everything from dog leashes to cat leashes or collars to... Um, photos of dead loved ones sometimes it's an outfit uh that they wore and what? there's wait there's hold on writing this, is this this is like are there like tributes to things that they've lost yeah man oh, the wow. whole town you put you put it there and they fucking burn the temple down and you let it go oh wow. shit you let it go right That's powerful and yeah. so ah <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> man yeah it still gets me right when i talk about it it fucking pulls me right back in there um but yeah, you know, the one that got Whitney, Aubrey's fiance, was she just saw a wedding dress. That was it. There was no fucking writing. You didn't know if it was a divorce or if his wife died. Like, she didn't know. But it just fucking, her being engaged just ripped her wide open, you know? And for me, when I was walking through, everyone's crying, people are meditating. 
it's a powerful fucking energy. You know, there's times where, and you talk about energy, people are going to say, woo, woo, blah, blah, blah. But there's no doubt there are certain people you hang with. I use this example and I'll make it quick, but certain people you hang with that are pessimistic, Mm -hmm. you know, they always drag you down. You're like, man, I don't like fucking hanging with that guy. I always feel like shit after. And there's somebody else, you know, like when I see you guys, where like, you guys fucking always make me laugh. You always make me feel good. And there's a certain energy when I'm around you that I fucking gravitate towards. Mm-hmm. I'm attracted yeah. to that, right? So the energy of this room is pain. It's sadness. It's mm-hmm. letting go. It's, 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 it's difficulty in letting go. That's why people travel to this place to leave <laughs> this thing behind to burn. And uh, I, you know, having Bear as a young, young child at that point, I think he had just turned two maybe um you know i i saw dads holding their fucking young kid in their arms that were dead oh shit. and their their fucking their kid was the same age as bear oh stuff you know and that just poured me open and it ripped me open for weeks after it wasn't like oh i experienced that i cried and, and then i moved on that fucking stuck with me. I mean, it's still there right now, mm-hmm. you know, because it's, it's, it not only does it touch you, but it touches you in a place that's it's real really, close to home. It's really fucking deep, man. It's mm-hmm. really deep. And you, to, you know, some people get that when, when just from hearing people talk about it and I got it, I fucking cried listening to Duncan talk about this place. So mm-hmm. when I was there, it was fucking Niagara Falls. It was fucking powerful. And, Anytime I spoke about that after for weeks after that, you know, I would really open up and cry and let it out. And mm. what was great, what I talked with Aubrey about was for some time prior to that event, I felt like I had emotional constipation. Every time I felt like I was going to cry, nothing would come out. Mm. Like, I don't know if I was stuck being a man or not being open to the experience. I've cried plenty of times before. I've done a lot of self-work on that, on being open to experience all the things that it means to be human mm-hmm. rather than male, just to be a fucking human. It's important to be able to cry. And that experience really opened me up. I mean, I had seen really sad scenes, gripping scenes in a movie and nothing. And I'm like, there's no one around me to see me cry. It's it's safe. We're okay. You can let it out. You just felt stuck. Nothing. Yeah, I felt fucking constipated. And after that, like anything, like we're watching the end of Storks and I fucking cry. <laughs> like, fucking, how, how many, how many, how many men do you think I struggle with this? Is. How many yeah. men do you think? I mean, I, I think I, it's massive. It's something we're conditioned to. And women yeah. have their own conditioning. Sure. There's no doubt about it. We right. all we all go yeah. through our own conditioning. And, and it's something that I've, that I've spoken about before. But the first time I read the four agreements with Don Miguel Ruiz, and he was talking about um, – all these agreements that we live by. And in the fir- in the introduction, he's talking about the domestication of man. And he goes into it further and further about how we're fucking a domesticated animal. And I'm like, bitch, what happened to this guy <laughs> to make him think that pessimistically about the world? And the more I've read it, I'm like, he's a thousand percent correct. Mm-hmm. He's 1000 percent correct. It's not just the agreement like, you know, uh, he is an ex- another great example. Like if you're a kid, this young girl, is singing and dancing and she's being really loud and mom's had a terrible day and she's a single mom and she's there with her child and she's like, we you just be quiet and yells at her or says like, you know, you don't even have a good voice. Boom. That fucking child agrees. I don't have a pretty voice mm-hmm. and never sings again. And every time it's brought up to them, they don't even know why at a certain point because they forgot, but they agreed to it. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's powerful to think like, how much programming do I have? You know, and, and I know Aubrey spoke a great deal about this when he when he was on your show. Anytime something is a stick for me, like, man, that really bothers me. I need to dive a little deeper. Let me unpack that. Like Rob Wolf says, let me unpack this and see what's mm-hmm. behind it. And I may not find a memory from my childhood where my parents said something they shouldn't, you know, unknowingly. It may not be that. It may be a coach. It may be a teacher. It may be anything down the road where this affected me in a way that changed me going forward. Mm. And if I can shed some light on that and see it from new angles and, sh- and have a different perspective, then maybe I can change going forward. Maybe I can be a different and better person to get more out of life after that. Mm. That's awesome. What, what challenges do you like that now? Man, you know, work has been a challenge because right when I first got here, I wanted to hit the ground running. Obviously, there was some um, 
there was a lingering sense of scarcity after, you know, getting canned the way that I did with no severance. And it was like, like fear, like back, yeah, back against the wall. I got to make this work. Let's hit the ground running. I want to prove to everyone what I know. I want to prove to everyone how hard I can work Mm. and I want to do it all, all things go, go, go. And in that process, um, you know, I was still working out and lifting weights, but you know, to use Paul check and Mike Salemi's terms, I wasn't working in, I was doing no meditation practices, no Qigong or Tai Chi and things that have really been amazing tools in my life to help me reset stress. And I think psychedelics are incredible, but that's not something I do every day. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those experiences are few and far between. And when they happen, they're powerful and lasting. But that can't, that's not my daily. And that shouldn't be anyone's daily routine, right? How do I affect my consciousness sober? How do I affect this? daily waking consciousness in a way where I can manage stress safely and I don't feel like I need to get blasted on alcohol or, you know, load the bong to forget, you know, and I love cannabis, Mm -hmm. but the point is like, those are tools that need to be used correctly. You know, they would, it's easy to say like, don't drink when you're sad, drink when you're happy. Like that's a fair rule of thumb, Mm -hmm. right? And that wasn't an issue for me, but stress would build quite a bit because all I was doing for me was working out. I was adding a physical stressor to the stress of a new job, working like a madman. And I was taking no time for myself. And, um, you know, we went, Aubrey, Aubrey hooked up a trip for Tasha and I and Bear to go out to Spirit Ranch in Sedona, which is his, his, um, consciousness getaway. Oh, you've been out there. It's fucking incredible. Bro, man. tell me, tell me about the ranch. So I met Porangi out there. It was a guy I just interviewed and this fucking beautiful and amazing woman, Anahata, who I'll be working with on some different, some different things. We went through a consciousness relationship work workshop. And I'm like, cool, man. I'm here with my wife. We'll level up together. It had nothing to do with her. She was like, tell me, tell me who your greatest teacher has been. And so everyone thinks, you know, for a minute. And um, and she's like, okay, think of that. Now, now your greatest teacher is not just the person who's taught you the most good. It's the person who's taught you the most bad, the most everything. This is usually a parent or it's usually a sibling. It's somebody you've spent the most amount of time with. And maybe they've showed you the best way to live, but they've also showed you all the things you don't want to do with your kids, all the things you don't want to do in life, all the ways you don't want to treat people. And for me, I knew, I'm not going to say who, but (laughs) I knew this person immediately because of that. And I spent hours on this, you know, working through it and shit like that. And, you know, we had, we had so many great things. And Sedona has a, it's a fucking special place, man. It really is. But I was meditating there and you do a detox. We're on all, you're vegan for six days. You do a colonic, you, um, it's all liquid. It's all liquid diet, soups and blended soups and shit like that. So it really are fucking pulling shit out of your body and there's no caffeine. Now, this is the first time oh, and you're a I'd gone without monster. caffeine. Yeah. I'm a monster. Oh, yeah, I was man. doing, uh, uh, I'd split a pot with my wife and have two more fucking yeah. alkalized coffees. Did you that go work. out there? Occasionally, oh. I'd have a half a modafinil. Like if I knew wow. I had a lot of work and yeah. I wanted to read wow. a lot and digest and, and really record the information, half a modafinil for sure. That's the move. And anytime I would schedule in, what I realized there was anytime I would schedule in meditation, my, my baseline level was jacked up like 10 notches. So here I am at 20 trying to come back down to zero and I can only get to 10, you know, from the, the amount of caffeine. And even that's that, yeah. even on the days I wasn't using modafinil, that was the fucking case because modafinil wasn't an everyday thing, but there was so much peace when I meditated in Sedona. I fucking cried. I was like, I haven't felt this peace in a long ass time. And I knew immediately what it was. And so now there are days like, I, you know, if we're grinding, I got you guys in town today. I'm a guest on your show. You're coming on on it show. I'm going to interview Rafael Lovato Jr. later as well. That's three podcasts. You got to be on point. But even still, I'm not going to come close to the amount of fucking caffeine that I used to ingest. Right. And after that, it was amazing because one cup of coffee from that break was like, fucking, I'm a rocket ship yeah, right now, right? right? Yeah. It reset my receptors and I really can get a lot from a little, but but that taught me not only was I not achieving the level of peace and stillness, which is the goal of meditation that I had hoped because of the caffeine, but you know, if I scheduled it in, it was like, let me just add this to my schedule. It wasn't a daily practice. Yeah. Like, let me see if I can fit this in for 15 minutes here because yeah. I don't have anything going on. Now it's totally different. Now I do fucking Tai Chi Every day, I take my shoes off. I go outside. I go grounding. I got my shirt off in the cold or the hot. I'll do standing breath work, you know, the Qigong practices that Paul Check has taught, 
in uh, how to eat, move, and be healthy at the end of his book, Zone Exercises, all that shit. And it's a reset for me, but it's daily. It's daily. Just like Kelly Starrett says, you know, you wouldn't brush your teeth once a week. Don't fucking do your mobility once a week. It's a daily <laughs> practice, right? Right, right? And that's what my meditation is. It's not, it's not all the time that I'll sit quietly in a dark room. I do employ that as a tactic. But quite often, it's at least getting outside, being in nature, and working on breath because breath work is one of the great tools. It's, it's one fucking, of the simplest it's tools. It's always like one of the ones amazing. I teach people first. Like just actually try to breathe for it. Like pay attention to the way you breathe for just focus but, on it. Five just minutes. Focusing literally on five it. minutes. But yeah. that's such a hard thing sometimes to communicate because everybody's like, "Well, I do breathe." What are you talking about? I breathe every day. I'm breathing right now. Like, what do you mean breathe? And I think it's part of the reason why it's so difficult is because of that. Because we I mean, we don't know. It's hard to teach something to someone that they haven't felt in a long time. You know, if you were born with one eye sewed shut and I'm keep telling you, yo, man, if you just take those threads out, like you'll see out of two eyes, if you haven't experienced it, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're an like, I can see perfectly because you have one eye open until I pull the threads out and then you open the other eye and now you see everything you've missed. People for so long go in these patterns of breathing, which by the way, breathing involves lots of muscles, which develop their own recruitment patterns. No different than if you sit a lot, a long time at a desk every single day, or if you walk a particular way, you develop this recruitment pattern that becomes your default pattern. And in order to change a default pattern, you have to first become conscious that it exists. Then you have to consciously change it, which means you have to work on it and you have to work on it long enough to make it your new default. So it actually takes work, and in, in, in the beginning part of that work, you don't notice the difference until it starts to become a default. So it's a very difficult thing to sell to somebody who's like, I breathe all the time, man. What are you right, talking about? Right. I have no problem. Even a guy like you, Kyle, who's so self-aware, it took you going away, eliminating all you know, these stimulants for you to feel the, you know, the, the, the difference, to feel like, oh, shit, this is what I'm missing, and now I can work towards it. Very, very difficult so thing to teach. So in, in Sedona, is there, uh, it was, is this like a big group of you guys? Or just yeah, a it was handful? a big group. It was the first time that we opened it up to non-Onnit employees. So we had some of the Onnit legends that came out. There was three guys, absolutely phenomenal people. And you know, it's funny because when we got there, uh, we did a medicine wheel where we talked about a lot of the teachings of Native American culture. And I'm fascinated by this stuff. I've worked with Native Americans out in California before many times, uh, some of the Lakota sun dancers. And um you know, it really, it, it, I think there's a lot of knowledge there that needs to be translated, especially into the West. And, it, you know, I try to embody it as much as possible and really just, I have a fascination with it as with a lot of things that I'm into, but I wasn't sure how everyone else was going to take this. Like, mm -hmm. well, getting a little weird here talking about the, you know, the Buffalo and shit like that. And like, and then I realized like, oh, you know, something I learned in an ayahuasca ceremony is I don't control anyone else's experience. I only control mine. Right. And that's a parallel to fucking the real world. Yep. I don't control your guys' experience. I do control mine, right? So I let that go. They'll have their own experience. And not maybe not surprisingly, by the end of it, everyone thought it was one of the most transformative experiences of their life. Fucking blew people out of the water. It felt like ayahuasca level ceremony. I have more notes from that six day well, what, what was it set up like seminar style? I mean, give me yeah, like we, walk we, me so in. I, had, I envision this like uh, we get there, we get there, and they right when we get there, Parangi takes us out back and he puts us through uh, a musical instruction. Your body's an instrument, and he teaches us how to play our body. You know how to play fucking different. You know three five. You just walk there and you get I do the leg guitar rhythm blocks. <laughs> okay, so I yeah. Yeah. so this is is this for in your balls? Fuck yeah! <laughs> is this for anybody, or do you have to be an on an employee to be able to go? Well, that's what I said. This is the first time they opened it up to. So not on skin employees. Flute. Okay. And I think down skin flute. And then, you know, down the road it will be open to people that that just hear about it, you know, via the the advertising and whatnot. Right. So it will be open to everyone. And that's the goal. The goal is how can we give pe people a, a transformative uh consciousness altering experience, mind altering experience that's spiritual in a way and transformative that's not illegal. Yeah. Right. Because that's the big issue here <laughs> is that all these plants are still illegal and it's a big fucking commitment to go to the Amazon. It's something I've said many times, like, Hey man, it's, it's one thing to spend 1200 bucks on a plane ticket to Peru. It's another thing to take two and a half weeks off work and to fucking pay for your room, your right, food and yeah, all the medicine. Yeah. It's a lot, man. It's a lot to ask for. Even if you have the money, like, like, and I used Aubrey as an example, when I was interviewing Parangi, like Aubrey, Aubrey, it's no money. It's not a problem for Aubrey to do that financially. Mm -hmm. 
but to take two and a half weeks off work. That's the part that's That's hard. a fucking issue, right? right? So it's we how do we make these things accessible to the masses? Mm-hmm. You know, and and something is funny because I was kind of a snob, but but well, let me just take you through it real quick. We get there, we do the musical stuff, and that's just to open people up. It's to get them out of their fucking shell. Now, are you looking around? Do you see some people like, what the fuck are we doing? Uh-huh. Or is yeah, everybody gotta, bought in right you away? Gotta, you got to beep. No, fuck no, dude. People <laughs> are fucking super reserved. Okay. Super reserved. You right. got to beatbox, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we dude. dude. We do. Put your dorky we mic. Do. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking, we throw out some weird ass sound for everyone. Yeah. But, uh, you know, by the end of it, we were having fun. And it loosened us up. Then we had dinner, you know, uh, some fucking bland soup. And uh, now the soup was great. But um, each day we had something for us. So we, you know, on a hot to tot, the consciousness relationship workshop, um, you know, we had a sound healing with Parangi, which was fucking incredible. Dude plays every instrument. He's got electronic board up there and he loops them in one after another. And like you're laying down with an eye mask on Ooh. and Full blown visionary state with no substance. Oh yeah, no bullshit. Like I was fucking. Sound is powerful. I was man. seeing all kinds of shit, and yeah. then I even like I pulled my eye mask up to look at him. Like, is this motherfucker playing all these? He was doing every fucking instrument, like twenty different instruments, oh, cool. and layering them in. Was that day? This day one, day two. What is this? No, this was like day day two. I don't know. It's it's hard, but there's six days there. We had something for us every day. Okay. Yeah. We went up. We went hiking and meditated at a, uh, an ancient native spot that's actually off trail. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that online or, you know, is this in like a canyon. Like what's the landscape look like? Uh, Spirit Ranch is, you know, it's not far from downtown Sedona, but it's very, it's on my like gravel roads to get there. It takes like another 20 minutes mm. to get there from the main road. And you, it's very secluded. It's by Bear Mountain, my man, Bear. And, um, you know, it, it's a giant ranch. You know, there's tons of space. We're the only fucking house there. It's secluded. And then we go to different places, you know, like the trails we go to start off, uh, you know, fairly touristy. And then by the time you get to the space you're going to, you're there all alone. Mm-hmm. So you how know, do they set up? How's the the bed, the sleeping arrangement set up? Is it a bunch of it's a giant house? There's plenty of beds. Oh, uh, wow. They're going to work on getting some yurts and different things for, for even more people to be able to stay there. Uh, they've built an Inipi in Lakota or a Temascal, uh, the sweat lodge, Native American sweat lodge they have back mm-hmm. there. That's for level three. So they have the curriculum for three levels. And level three is the initiation process. So you go through the sweat and you do that and you come out on the other side. But I mean, I had visionary states multiple times, you know, working with Anahata uh, on her light bed. Uh, And this is again, going to sound woo woo, but Ben Greenfield's big on this. Uh, NASA did a three-year study on pulse electromagnetic fields, frequencies, and uh, this, this biomats, two fucking grand. It really works. I've laid on one before. You could feel the energy of it, but um, you know, a lot of negative ions and it's pulsing at the energy of the earth, the same magnetic frequency. Right. But I've never had body work done on that. So Parangi gave me a massage on his fucking biomat and he hits the fucking singing bowl and it's straight lift off. Like I was seeing all sorts of shit again without substance. So, wow. so why is this important? Well, it's important for people to have altered states. It's mm-hmm. important for people to tap into something deeper than themselves and to see around the corner. You know, a term they use was, where's your blind spot? Everyone has a fucking blind spot. What am I not seeing that's there within me and without, right? What's inside that I don't see and what's outside of my relationships that I don't see. So you're never going to get rid of your blind spot, but how far can we widen this back so that we can see further? We can see further into ourselves. We can see further into each other and really understand what's going on in our lives because that level of awareness is what grants us peace. That level of awareness makes things understandable in a way that aren't previously. It, now, this sounds like it's it's really deep and it could like scare some people. Did you, is there anybody who gets up and says, I can't do this and they leave because it's just too heavy for them and they, no, or they feel like it's this cult-like thing that they're going no, through? it's so guided. That's the thing, man. And it doesn't, it sounds cultish right now, but I promise you, if you go to that, it's something where you, you're taken by the hand through everything. And it's like- So nobody leave. Nobody gets weirded fuck out. Fuck no, man. Oh, wow. So everyone- no. No, people need time to themselves, and there's plenty of that. You have plenty of downtime. Okay. Um, but the the kicker to work was, it out, right? You go just saw something weird. You you experienced yeah, maybe something weird. Then you got like four hours and of downtime. You get, and but you get time to talk about it. You know, that's the other thing is it's not like you have this experience. And then all right, guys, it's bedtime. You know, like no, like like let's talk about our experiences. And people have emotional breakdowns. They open up. And you really share something like you go through it. I went through it with uh, obviously my wife was there, but another on an employee Ian, and a couple other on an employees. And I feel fucking like that's my brother, man. Like that's something I like just the same as if we had gone to the Amazon together. Mm-hmm. Like we went through some shit and I know some darkness from his past and he knows some darkness from my past. 
right? And there's there's some there's real value in the relationships that you have with people when they are vulnerable and they tell you what's underneath the surface. Right. It's not just, yeah, man, today's going good. It's like, no, I know how you grew up. Right. I know the shit you've been through. I know that. I know you a little bit more than I did before. Right. You know, but what we finished Anahanta put us through shamanjelic breathwork, which is a lot like holotropic breathing by Stanislav Grav. And it's funny because I've done Wim Hof breathing. I felt my fucking hands curl in. I've seen different colors, chakra energy, whatever you want to fucking call it. I've seen different colors in my visionary field, but never have visions from it. So it was a little snobby when I got there. I was like, I don't think this is going to compare to fucking a a heroic dose of psilocybin or going to the Amazon. (laughs) But I mean, full fucking body. Like I was shaking, like vibrating uncontrollably from this breath work and seeing all sorts of shit. Like just wow. fucking it, one of the most powerful visions that I had, which was on confidence, was um, the, you you go to a spa, you go into outer space and you see, well, I went in outer space and I saw a table of the elders, you know, and this is something they talk about in Native American culture. And the elders will tell you something. They have a message. So this is a guided vision, but it was clear as fucking day in, in with my eyes closed, clear as day. And the elders simply pointed to my seat and said, take your seat at the table. That's gangster. It's like some mafiosa shit right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I will, you're sir. A, you're a white yes, guy Yes, I will. Now. I've been you're waiting for this moment. Kiss the fucking Kiss my ring. <laughs> 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 no, but it was like, like, you're fucking welcome. You have a seat at the table with us. Like, you can be an authority on shit. You know, and that's something I talked with you guys about in the past. Like, man, everything I talk about is something somebody else is an expert in. You're like, no, you're a maven. Was that a challenge for you before where you felt like you you were an imposter or you felt like you weren't just as good? No, no, no. It's just like, it's just like, well, anything that I talk about, and this is still the case, but anything I talk about, it's not my fucking... It's not, I didn't do all the research. Yeah, on but you know what's funny? Intermittent fasting. I didn't That's do all the research on everybody. It. Exactly. Exactly. We, everybody, as humans, we just continue to build on other people's information. And that's how we evolve and we get smarter and we get better. And that's yeah. half the reason we do this is the sharing of wisdom. Right. Right. And you acknowledge it all the time. I mean, which yeah. is important too. But yeah, I mean, we all build off of everybody else's knowledge. That's how we grow. Yeah. So that would, that would, but, but also just like feeling, I guess, like that I can that I can speak among the elders that I'm yeah. there. And that's something Paul Chuck said. He said, dude, you're a fucking elder. Now you own that, you know? And that was really powerful for me too, coming from a man like Paul Chuck, who I hold in the highest regard, mm. but um, yeah, it was powerful. And there was many things like that, you know, that they just layered into that. And, and there wasn't a person that left that experience that didn't say that was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. All the, the altering your state of consciousness is so transformative. And I'm not talking about taking, uh, psychedelics, although that's a very fast and effective way of doing it, I'm sure. It's really just about forcing yourself to be really here at the moment. And one of the easiest things you could do if you're listening and you're like, I want to experience that is eliminate distractions. That's that's the easiest thing you, do, you can do. If you fast and you eliminate all distractions and you're alone or you're somewhere where there's really nothing else to do, Watch what happens. Give yourself a few, give yourself a few days. I mean, if you can give yourself a few days without distract, eliminate caffeine, eliminate food, eliminate all these different things. Watch where your mind goes. Now the problem is people are scared. Well, it, we've, they're it, scared of doing that. They don't never, want to talk. We've never been in a time that's this difficult. <laughs> we've never been in a time when it's that difficult to detach. Oh, you're super. Everything. We are so plugged into everything right now that it's never been this challenging. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I, I think that uh, I, I mean, I've just I watched my own evolution uh, like with my phone. Like, it's crazy to think that just 15 years ago, none of us even used that. Like, I didn't need my where now, like I you get this feeling of almost anxiety if you walk out the door and it's not in your pocket. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck, bro? And I th- consider myself a very aware person. So to see that see that happen to me and notice that, well, wow, how that could sneak up on you. I think that's everybody else, mm-hmm. man. So many mm-hmm. people are so, so a de- detached that they haven't separated and had per- a perspective of like what fucking what is it like if I actually just stop and actually think about my breathing? That's why I think the breathing thing is the first thing that I try to right because everybody. you can't if you can't sit down for fucking one minute and yeah. just fucking get your well, breathing. You need to fuck get meditation, somebody. dude. You're not ready for <laughs> sitting down and meditating or doing any fucking crazy chants. You can't even fucking breathe yet. I'm like that's <laughs> like step one is just become aware of your own breathing. For me, that was like game changer. I was like. Absolute game changer. Yeah. And it's simple things. It's so simple. It's very small, simple things. Like when I, you know, really kind of figured out that uh, if I didn't 
shouldn't drink water while I was eating my food. Oh, that was a big one. That was yeah. a huge. That was Paul Check. Paul Check said that talked about that, and I thought to myself, like, holy fuck! Every time I eat, I have to drink water because I literally have to wash it down because I've conditioned myself to treat food like it's a supplement. Like wash it down, get the protein, get the fat, and I didn't even realize that I was doing this. So when I eliminated water and I had to focus on chewing. I had achieved a new level of awareness. It was so stupid. It was stupid because it was so simple. I don't mean stupid like it's dumb. Stupid to me because I thought in order to become more aware, I had to do all these complicated things. When in reality, it was just don't drink water, chew your food. That's yeah. It sounds like a child, right? Like you tell your kid, sit down and chew your food. And here I am, I'm doing it. And I'm like, <laughs> explosion of ideas and understanding what's going on with my food. And holy shit, I, chew, I need to chew my food more than three times. This is crazy. It's those little things that make you know that big of a difference. Now you're in. Is this your first like? I'm putting quotation marks here. Corporate type job. Oh no, you've doubt. Ever had? this is the first nine to five <laughs> I've ever had in my life. You know, I got out of college. I specifically didn't want. It's one of the most depressing times of my life when I got done with football. And I talked about this on the solo podcast I did with On It. I think it's episode twelve. But um, I don't need to go dive down into that too much. But basically, I I quit going to school my senior year after football. I did not want to fucking have a desk job. I feared what that meant. I saw how my parents were with that lifestyle. I didn't want that for me. And um, I really loved being a fucking athlete. So I just started training in mixed martial arts after a, a year of heavy drug use and uh, <laughs> not the good ones. And um, MMA gave me something new to go for, you know, and then it wasn't long after that. I got my first fight, uh, one in under 30 seconds, won my second fight in under 30 seconds. And I was hooked. Like, all right, now let's start training. Let's make this real. And that really gave me focus and drive and purpose again. And it also kept me out of the desk job. But, you know, that that all, could only go so far. You know, there'd only be one champion in each division, you know. And um, considering the fact that I still had to live in my mom's garage while I was a fucking professional athlete. Which is kind of crazy. Dude. And working another job at the titty bar. It's like, I don't need this anymore. It's too taxing. I'm, I'm taking permanent, hopefully just semi-permanent brain damage from these interactions, from these fights. And Kyle, so Kyle, not, not the, but you got to tell me how, what percentage do you think of fighters uh, experience that right now? Like, is it, how common is it? Are the you, CTE? No no no, 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 no. I mean like the struggling, being a professional athlete oh, right. for the UFC, struggling to get by while you're fucking training your ass off to be the best. How, what percentage would you say? Maybe 10% of the fighters make enough money to where they don't need to worry about shit. Probably another 20% make enough to get by. And then I would say the bottom 60, 70% wow. are more really than struggling. half. Is, yeah, I'd say more than half are struggling. Because if you think about it, there's so many new guys. There's so many smaller shows on Fox Sports 1 and straight to Fight Pass. Those guys are making shit. They're making fucking eight and eight. Eight grand to show up, eight grand to win. You get hurt in a fight. It's your only fight that year. You're telling me fucking 16 grand is going to support you and your family? No. I don't give a shit if you live in Bangladesh. That's not fucking working out mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There was times where I had fight of the night, 40 grand bonus, but on top of 10 and 10 means I got 60 grand. I'm paying 10% to coaches, 10% to management. That's $48,000 before I pay the IRS to last me a year. That's less than a teacher makes. All right. And there, and then, let me, let me go back on that. A lot of people are like, oh, you're saying fighters should make more than teachers do. Teachers should get more money. Yeah, we all should fucking get more money. Right. No doubt. But the thing is, maybe there's not that much money in teaching from the government. There's a fuck ton of money in the UFC. It's just what they dole out. It's it's known now they give 15% or less of the total revenue to fighters. Whereas you compare to boxing, 80% to the boxers. Strike force you to give 70% to the fighters. The NFL PA went on strike in 2007 to get 55% and 45% to the owners, 55% of the players. Right, so you, comparatively, it's a wow. fucking joke, dude. Wow. It's not that the money's not there; it's fucking there. They're just fucking. Hoarding it's less it all. than five times what almost yeah. every under, other under under fifteen percent. Even on a fucking card where Conor McGregor's getting seven figures guaranteed. Here's the problem. So, the problem with it is you've got the supply and demand. You've got an endless supply of fucking kids willing to fucking die in the ring or the cage for nothing. So they don't they don't have to. You know what I mean? They get all these yeah. kids who are ready. Fuck you! Fight for nothing. Let's do this. And so. Well, it makes it difficult. We'll we'll see. We got we got a you know class action lawsuit going. We'll see how that pans out. But you know, fighting for me, there it, it. I learned a lot from it. I have a lot of gratitude for it. It helped me change in many ways. In in, you know, you talk about how I got here in the position I'm at right now in the day that I'm in and on it. Like, there's no doubt that yeah. that 
that fighting was the catalyst for that. Sure. Because fi- getting knowing I was going to get punched in the face made me want to learn more. Yeah. Like Ooh. I have to learn more every time I sit down and I, I love video games, but every time I sit down and play a video game, that's time I could have spent doing mobility. That's time I could have been in an ice bath or get a massage sure. or fucking or reading, reading yeah. <laughs> more to learn more about diet, nutrition, and supplementation any way I can get an edge. So mm. let, let me ask you a question because you, uh, you're talking about how you used to fight. And I have, I imagine that you have to activate or tap into a alternative operating system to get into a cage and to you know, beat, hurt, another, beat another man to hurt another man physically. And I know it's an agreement. It's voluntary. And there's a lot of beauty in that. There is because it's competition. It's pure. There's rules. It's not like we're fighting to kill each other, but you are kind of fighting to kill each other in, in a way, right? That operating system, is that something that you feel like uh, you could tap into now that you've changed so much? Or do you feel like tapping into that now would hurt too much or would change are you too, too much, much of a lover now? Um, There was a really strong sense in my last fight that I would never fight again. Mm. And I knew once I had that feeling like, Oh, this is it. Let's fucking, let's still try to win. Let's do everything I can. Um, cause I'm in the fight when I realized, was that like a, I, I don't want to do this anymore feeling. Yeah, it was, it was, this is not important mm. and I'm getting fucking elbowed in the face underneath <laughs> a fucking <laughs> savage a hell of a time <laughs> Pat Cummins. <laughs> yeah. And this isn't important. And I'm like, well, am I going to get, am I going to fucking lay here and get knocked out? And it was like, no, get the fuck up. And then I kept getting up and you know, it's funny. We, we mentioned that talking about world records. Uh, I, that was, that was the most takedowns ever. And if Pat Cummins has the, the, the record for the most takedowns ever, the light heavyweight <laughs> fight was my final fight with him. <laughs> but that means that I got the most standups back to the feet ever in a light heavyweight Which fight. Which is actually, actually so, something to be, that's pretty could, fucking he cool. Could not, he could not have that no record without No one's ever been knocked down as many times in the UFC and then gotten back up. That's <laughs> kind of a cool record, bro. That's brilliant. <laughs> I think I could sell that as pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So, you know, when the time came, it was like, hey, man, this ain't a sport to be 500 in. This ain't a sport to win one, lose one. Right? Yeah. You know, there's too much damage. I'm not making enough money. And, you know, it was, it was when it t- came time to move on, I was okay with it. It wasn't like when I, when football ended, it was kind of like, what do I do now? You know, when, when fighting ended, I knew I had passions. I knew there was things that I was interested in and I just kept that up. You know, I was still working um, on the weekends at the bar, bartending and bouncing and, and not the greatest environment, but there was beauty in that. And I was able to read and, and learn so much more and have passion in that and continue to work out and continue to train in jujitsu mm-hmm. and compete in jujitsu on occasion. And um, from there, it just felt like it was just a matter of time before things would start to work out. And, you know, going on the Joe Rogan show was at the time, it just seemed like a fun deal. You know, mm-hmm. it was like, hey, I got nothing to promote. A lot of people go on his show and they have a book launch or they've got a website they want to send people to. I didn't have any of that. There was no promotion. Was he curious because you had gone through like keto as an athlete? Yeah, you know, we were were buddies and I was bullshitting with him right after he had, he had a a few keto guys on, but he just had Mark Sisson on and I was reading Primal Endurance and fucking loved that book. And so I, you know, he said, all right, it looks like I'm gonna try to go full keto on the podcast. So like a day later, I wrote him on Twitter like, hey man, if you're going to do this, it's something I've been doing for a couple of years now. Here are the common pitfalls. You know, don't have your protein too high. Sure. And it's don't worry about muscle loss because it's anti catabolic. And just went down the basic macros. And, and obviously, you got to keep your cruciferous veggies and your fiber high because you want to feed the good bacteria. You want to feed the, the, all the guys that are really the regulatory police as, uh, as our buddy, Dr. Michael Ruscio calls, those guys need to be fed too, right? So giving him the ins and outs and he was like, fuck, why don't you just come on the show? And I'm like, I'm fucking driving Boom. down whenever you want, man. He's like, I got time Thursday at one. Boom. Two days later, I drove down and um, and that hit. And then, uh, you know, it was funny that the, the very next week I drove down to LA again, got fucking Chelsea Handler baked on her show and put her through a workout. So <laughs> yeah. She was already starting to just pop up. And um you know, I was involved with some pro cannabis stuff and, and, uh, I don't know how the Netflix producers got a hold of me, but, um, you know, shit started popping up. And even though I had nothing to promote or anything like that, I just kept learning and kept grinding. And then it was like, you know, Joe encouraged me to start a podcast and I asked how hard it was and all, I don't know. And then, all right, man, this is something I want to do, you know? And, um, it wasn't long after that when uh, the former CEO of Brain FM hit me up and said, "Hey, we want you know we want to start a podcast. We want you to host it, and we'll pay you full time to do it." And it was like, "Bam! Now I can fucking do this." 
you know, and, and it ended up being because I was talking about plant medicines and the things that had really transformed my life, they didn't want to have that attached to their company. And at the time I was fucking heated, but in hindsight, yeah, man, it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. I get it, dude. You want to back everything by science with your, your company. You don't want anything that could be non-scientific or too though, controversial, or too controversial, even though science supports it now, it's still illegal. And so I got it, you know, and, um, that allowed me to start my own podcast with them as a sponsor, which really was beautiful because then I didn't have a muzzle. I could talk about whatever the fuck I wanted. I get whatever guests I wanted. And, you know, originally we had been interviewing other tech guys and shit, and it wasn't really my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. You know, now it was my, my wheelhouse, you know? And so we, it, it really did facilitate um, a space to learn and not to worry about finances and to continue to grow and to master the craft and by no means, it's still a work in progress. I'm not a fucking master by any means, but I got a lot better in that time period. And then, you know, when I met Aubrey, I didn't need a fucking job. It wasn't like, hey, buddy, I love you. Will you hire yeah. me? It was just like, no, man, I just want to get to know you. You know, I'm a fucking fan. I've heard him on Rogan's talking about plant medicines. There's a lot I want to talk to that guy about. And Alpha Brain's one of my favorite fucking nootropics. Sorry for the plug, boys, but it is. <laughs> you know, like if I take Modafinil or even some of the Racetams, and I jump off. If I, if I go on Racetans with Alpha GPC, they fucking work. But when I jump off, I, I feel we've, we've I always like the always drop. I don't we've, like we've the We've always talked really good about the Alpha. I mean, Alpha Brain is the shit, dude. I feel the There's drop. There's a reason so, why it's the staple supplement for on it, man. Yeah, it's man. A, it's a, and so, and it's and it's not to go down the, the on it supplement hole. It's just to say that there there were things that I wanted to talk to him about to tell him I appreciate him. I appreciate what he's done, and I fucking love the stuff. And and you know what was cool is that game recognized game. Like we're on that flight and John Wolf's the fucking master trainer on it. And there wasn't like all of us were fucking learning from one another. It was like the Knights of the Round Table. Everyone mm-hmm. had a voice. Everyone had a seat at the table like the elders. And we got to really fucking learn from each other and realize, fuck, man, these guys have so much knowledge. And that's what I was thinking about them. And they were thinking about that about me. Mm-hmm. And now we have this fucking really tight, cohesive unit and on it that's going onward and upward. The podcast is going to be fucking... It's already in a space where it's it's infinitely better where, than where it was before. Y- yes, I agree. And, I agree. I think and, you're killing it. Yeah, man. And, it, and it's a fun, it's a fun, it's a really fun spot to be in. And now since Sedona, I have balance back in my life. Mm. More importantly than anything, I have a daily practice for working in. I have a daily practice for stress management. And those are the tools that maybe I knew about. And like I use this quote all the time for Bruce Lee, it's not enough to know we must do. So I knew this shit. I read fucking Paul Check's book 10 years ago, but I wasn't doing it every day. Right, right. Now I'll do it. You know, like you can say like, oh, I know how to bench squat and deadlifts, but you know, you don't build up the courage to go when you're supposed to go. Isn't that and funny? It's a we're, big difference, we're, man. We're, we're funny creatures like that. Like we know better. It's like, yeah, I know that. But until you actually go through it, it's like you don't. You don't there, actually subscribe to it until then, there's you know? knowing yeah. and then there's knowing and real knowing is in your body. There's the mind knowing like I know I should do that. But when you experience something, that's well, that, when your body knows it. The knowledge through the body is embodiment. Mm-hmm. And Paul Check talked about this quite a bit on the show where you can read every book on earth. But unless you digest process and then embody that knowledge, mm-hmm. you're the fucking you're the smartest guy in the living room. In- you're just quoting shit. Living in your head all the time is insanity. It will drive you to insanity. Living in your head and your body, that's balance. And you know what's funny about that? When you look at the scientific literature, and this always trips me out, the receptor, uh, the serotonin receptors in the stomach or the gut and in the heart, extremely high. You have several brains in your body, several organs in your body that respond to uh, feelings and uh, it what trips me out about that is for thousands of years nobody knew this but they would refer to things like your gut and your heart like listen I feel your, this in my heart I listen to your like heart listen, listen to your, your heart. trust your gut how and it's funny because they respond differently to different stimuluses they feel different and learning to listen to all of those is what gives you balance but we Western societies its strength uh, is that it's uh, very good in the headspace. It's better than any other society in the world in its headspace. That's what Western medicine is, what science is, the scientific method. But but at its fault is it's ignored the other aspects of knowing, which is in the gut and in the heart. And so that's why you see dysfunction. That's why you always see dysfunction. You can see dysfunction. It looks different in different ways, but in Western societies, all being in the head leads to it can lead to mental issues. It can lead to stresses when they shouldn't be there, where you have all your needs met. You got water, food, shelter, and why the fuck am I anxious and stressed out and depressed all the time? Like, what the hell is going on? And 
you know, I'm not taking care of my gut and I feel terrible and I don't, you know, listen to my heart and I feel terrible, but yet I know all these things and what's going on. Totally, totally different, totally different experience. Yeah. We, you know, and, and, uh, not to, not to fucking go down the ayahuasca rabbit hole again, but there was a shaman that I had worked with who, who told me, you know, when, when the storm comes, monkeys don't climb to the top, to the treetop. It's too fucking windy. It's too unstable. They go down. They go down to the roots where it's strong. That's where they're safe. But what do we do as humans? When the shit hits the fan and there's chaos all around us, we try to fucking think our way out of it. We go up to the fucking treetop, right? So we have to return to our center. We have to bring that back down. And to put that in a practical terms for people that are like, oh, what the fuck does that mean? I'm not going out of my anus. I'm not going to fucking bring my headspace there. <laughs> it's place fucking I go. But um, to return to our heart, to feel what we're going through and and if we can sit with that in a float tank or in a quiet dark room or out in nature with the fucking birds chirping and nothing on i listen to audible i listen to podcasts but there's a time to disconnect from that too mm-hmm. right to be alone to truly be alone and in our own skin and then to feel what what's going on inside that sheds light on it and then that gives us ideas so we can return to the treetop and figure it out but if we just try to fucking think our way out of the chaos it'll never fucking good happen. luck it ain't gonna happen yeah. so uh two questions here do you feel like you have a higher purpose and if you do what is that what drew me to you know the higher purpose man that's there there's a couple things i want to talk about with that well probably One, sit at the table man <laughs> of I'm, right, but what is, I'm at the it, table guys right. don't forget what I told you <laughs> don't forget the vision yeah, don't bro. forget the vision sure but, uh, but that's different no, but, than no, like it is it yeah. is it is so so the purpose of the podcast was something that I heard Dr. Chris Ryan talk about it's 50% selfish I want to meet great people like you and become fucking friends mm-hmm. I want fucking awesome sure. friends and I want to learn what you guys have to know which is a lot I want to learn what Rob Wolf has to know and then to share that wisdom with the world that's the other 50. How do I give that in a conversation format to people so we all learn together, right? That's that's just on the podcast. That's my purpose there. Something I've really been drawn to. And, you know, deeper than that is the continued self-growth and self-mastery that's a never-ending. There is no fucking finish. There is no final level. It'll never end. It won't it won't end in this lifetime. It'll continue on in the next and that's okay. But it's it's to walk that path where I am, I am continually trying to better myself. I'm continually trying to be the best person I can be. And in doing that, I'll be the best dad. I'll be the best lover, the best husband. I'll be the best son, the best brother. And that, that makes not only me get more out of life, it improves my quality of life, but it improves all the relationships I have with everyone around me. And if I do that, that in a small way makes the world a better place. You know, be, be the change you wish to see in the world. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. And that's that to embody that. That's probably the most important thing I think anyone can work towards. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you're going to, you're going to uh, blow up our ego a little bit, but we recognized your, what you have to offer your greatness way back when you, we first met you. You guys discovered me. We, we felt, well, we felt it. We felt it. We talked about it. It felt really good. We liked you. Um, and you know, you don't meet a lot of people where right away you meet them and you have to be open in order to do this because if you're not an, a confident, open individual and you meet someone else who's got that inside of them, it can feel threatening. It can feel like a little ego competition. Um, and I think that's a huge mistake. And um, we're all, we all pride ourselves in being kind of that way. And we identified that in you right away. We felt mm-hmm. it. We're like, fuck this dude's, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's got some greatness in him. And, you know, I know that's going to make our egos feel good, but uh, when, you know, Honor brought you on board, um, the first comment, I think I was, I went on Aubrey's page and I said, that's the fucking smartest decision I've seen you guys. I mean, not that you guys have made bad decisions or anything, but I think you guys made a brilliant decision bringing Kyle on board. So I think, uh, well, I, I speak for everybody. We're fucking, aw- it's awesome to see this brother. We're very oh, yeah. proud very and proud of you, dude. um, we're, we're happy to see on it, make a decision like that. And, uh, I know you and wherever you're going to go, you're going to, you're going to kick ass, but um, they, I don't know if they really know, maybe they do, but I don't know if they really know how awesome of a decision that was. So it's fucking awesome to see you doing this brother. Hell yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you guys, man. Much yeah. love to you guys. Always a good time with you, dude. And thanks Hell for yeah. coming on the show, man. Uh, check it out. Mind pump has an app. Now we now offer an app that you can download our show on. You could do special searches and the app will be progressing. There's going to be more stuff on it. It's totally free. Go to the app store, download it, look it up. It's mind pump media also, if you go to our YouTube channel, we have a free workout. It's a 30-day workout this month. 
Um, we take you through, we progress you all the way through. And at the end of it, we tell you where to go from there. Just go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, Mind Pump TV. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.